room. The rain room. The rain room. The rain room. No Jay with me this week. I'm flying solo, but I do have a special guest, and that is someone who I've mentioned a time or two on the podcast, and that is my dad. Dad, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thanks, son. Uh, do you want to do you want to chat a little bit about James Bond? Well, yeah, so let's I mean, start the, with uh, what's your earliest memory? My earliest memory is, goes back to when I was thirteen. It was nineteen sixty three. My brother, eldest brother Ken, and his wife Maureen uh, took me to Sheffield to see the latest James Bond film, and that was From Russia with Love with Sean Connery. Um, I remember queuing up outside the cinema because it was a very popular film as they all are and it was chucking it down with rain anyway we went in and i really enjoyed it and that's probably the first memory of uh, of james bond so then fr from there kind of did your love of james bond just grow yeah um to me and I've, a lot of people have said this before james bond is a man's man like tom jones uh, Sean Connery uh, and as we all know Sean Connery played James Bond but he has, in his other films he's come over as a, a man's man and he also has like Tom Jones, Elvis Presley, Paul Newman, Brad Pitt, they've got sex appeal and it's like other men think they've got it but they haven't but what they have to do is nothing because it oozes out on them uh, and Sean Connery Obviously, he was the first James Bond, and everybody else sort of looked up to him. And he was a tough, cold-blooded killer, but he had to be tough in that world of spies, espionage, and, and so on. Yeah. So, um, obviously, Bond's been going for over sixty years now. We've got twenty-five films in the bag. What would you say is your favourite Bond film of them all? Uh, well, I've seen them all, and to me, it's got to be Skyfall uh, with Daniel Craig. I don't know why it just appeals to me more mainly because he's up against it really bad and uh, his boss M uh, dies uh, in the film and, and it's got everything it goes back to his childhood roots uh, of bad memories of his parents dying when he was young uh, it's, to me it's Skyfall is great and uh, I like Adele and one or two people don't but she mm. sang it great the, the song um and everything was great it, we went back in time with the aston martin and uh, scotland i've only been there once and it's a beautiful country and of course it, james went back to his childhood roots uh, it's got to stick out as my favorite bond film even though you know th he's made great films uh th well they all have they're all great but uh, to me skyfall obviously it's the most recent and as you get older, memories fade, and uh, they faded off some earlier Bond films, you know, of certain things. But Skyfall sticks out in my mind. That's a, that's a good choice. I'm not going to argue with that one. And by one or two people don't like Adele, you mean me, don't you? Because <laughs> I've I've made my uh, well, I do. <laughs> well, it's it's okay to be wrong sometimes. <laughs> bloody kids <laughs> so um <laughs> let's let's go to the other end of the spectrum so you know we're both james bond fans yeah probably would we say i wouldn't say super fans probably casual fans or would you say you're a super fan uh casual, yeah, casual. Uh, i mean obviously we've seen all the films yeah but yeah don't necessarily know them you know like experts as such oh, no, but, no, no, no. but we, we generally enjoy them all yeah for yeah. the most part but what would you say is the low point what would you say is the worst bond film or uh, the one you liked the least the, it's got to be um the man with the golden gun it just didn't appeal to me for some reason and uh roger moore a nice bloke that he was to me he wasn't james bond you had to have a a stubborn cold-blooded streak in you uh, and roger moore was a nice bloke you know he was not a bad actor i mean he was no Lawrence olivier but to have christopher lee it, it just didn't match up uh and it was it was a weak storyline and that shootout where there was these uh, mirrors it, it just didn't appeal to me it looked to me like a a tv studio had been set up and it, it wasn't it it wasn't the real bond and mm -hmm. I, I just i just that to me uh, the man with the golden gun was the least 
favourite one for me. Yeah, that's a, that's a good answer. So you, so you mentioned uh, Roger Moore. Obviously, you've talked a little bit about Connery as your earliest memory and Craig. But uh, of those three or of the other three that played the role, who would you say is your favourite Bond actor of all? Uh, I think just, just by a whisker, it's Daniel Craig. Just ahead of uh, Sean Connery. Uh, Sean Connery obviously was the first and he set the benchmark, he set the goals and everybody tried to be him. Roger Moore was the least best Bond. George Lazenby could have been but he only made one film and he, he threw it away and I'm sure he realises he threw it away. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Craig had everything, toughness and you know he got beat up badly and he got marked and, and everything else, he, he got injured and all that. Uh, on the screen that is and then there was uh, Timothy Dalton great actor but he was a classical actor but he had that mean streak about him which is what Bond needs uh, but to me it was Daniel Craig was the best but only just in front of, of uh, Sean Connery that's a, that's a good answer we'll talk about the, the Bond actors in a little bit more detail later on now throughout the the series there's been various theme songs various singers and bands have, have left their mark on on the bond franchise of the 25 songs that they've been do you have a favorite theme song yeah yeah uh, although i reckon adele is great to me i got to back back to 1963 uh, matt munro from russia with love uh, it just appeals to me it's matt munro great singer as as all i'm aware that some of their songs and that but um i suppose it's memories as you get older you cling on to your memories and matt munro great singer and that was a great song from russia with love and it, you know it's that's it for me he, that was the best to me that was the best song yeah that's good we'll, we're going to talk top fives later but just a bit more on the songs there's there's kind of the classic style with the likes of matt munro or a shirley bassey uh, and adele kind of brought that back with skyfall but then you have some other uh, kind of almost rock songs with the likes of Paul McCartney and Wings and maybe Duran Duran. Um, is there any particular style of music? Is there any songs that stand out to you that maybe you don't like? Or what, what do you think generally of the Bond music? Um, it fitted the film. All the, all the songs did. Um, I'm not a fan of Billy Ellis um, and one or two others. But uh, I, I like ballads. I like rock. But the ballad of, of uh, From Russia With Love, uh, to, if you call it the ballad, I mean, I'm not a musician or anything like that, but I, I like something like that, From Russia With Love, and uh, that that's basically it. I'm not a musician, I like my music, but and I like rock songs. Uh, Paul McCartney, I like him and his music, but, you know, it was okay. All the songs and the music were okay for the film. Oh, good. Okay, so we'll, we'll like I said, we'll get into a top five a bit later on. Um, but another thing synonymous with James Bond are the Bond girls. Uh, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> um, so let's get straight into it. Do you have any favourite Bond girls that stick to mind? We're going to talk a top five later, but who would you say is your standout um, Bond girl? Well, going back to Dr. No, uh, Ursula Andress. Uh, or should I say Ursula Undress? Because uh, she had everything, as, as all Bond girls do. And... Um, they're all beautiful. All women are beautiful, except the bitches, aren't it? But that's another story. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they're, they're all beautiful, and I, I really have to think really hard as we go through the Bond films. Uh, and um, you can take that any way you want, but yeah, I think you know, really hard indeed. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've got a soft spot for them and all, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, they're all beautiful very attractive very sexy um and going back to my favorite bond film of from russia with love uh they're all beautiful but i think her name was lottie lenya who's played the villain uh lenska i forget now but she had these steel toe caps with a a, a blade in them in, uh, in her yeah, shoes yeah. she was an oldish woman uh, but you could say yeah she was a bond girl but she was a villain uh, Lot, I think her name was Lottie Lenny, played the Russian uh, agent uh, who recruited Diana Bianchi, who, gorgeous as she was, 
was never sort of heard of again. Uh, and this you, happens to a lot of Bond girls. Do you mean Rosa Klebb? Yeah, that was the, the character, wasn't it? Rosa, Rosa yeah, Klebb. That's yeah. it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they always seem to have a, a Bond girl who, who's there in main female role, but then she seems to either fade away or not heard of much again. But uh, they wrote D Diane, Diana Le Bianchi in, in, uh, from Russia with Love. Yeah, she was nice, as they all were. Yeah, so the one I'm trying to go through my notes, she played the role of. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, sure. Uh, she was Tatiana Romanova. Yeah, that's she? it. Yeah. Tanya, yeah. Of course, yeah. One, I think uh, for the listeners of the, the main pod, you've probably heard, heard me talk about her. I think she's near the top of my list as well, so uh, hard to argue that. Um, on the flip side, though, we've gone we've gone from the the good now to the bad. Various villains have uh, uh, tried to thwart James Bond. Do you have a favourite villain from the franchise? Well, one or two actors have played um, uh, the the boss uh, in with the cat. Blofeld. Uh, Blofeld, that's it. Yeah. Blofeld. Well, uh, Donald, uh, what was it? Donald Gray, D uh, a British actor. He played uh, the Blofeld. Um, and Donald Donald Pleasance, but yeah. what was there was an actor, British actor, Gray. Oh, I forgot oh. his name now. Um, I'll I'll Google it. Keep yeah. keep talking away to yeah. the listeners um, while I get on my phone. And he, he got killed. He had a, a double, and Bond killed the the double, and then it was a real one, real Blofeld, a, English actor, but name of Gray, and I've forgotten him. But also he appeared later on in a another Bond film where he played one of the good guys and he was murdered. It was, it was in Japan. I think it was Diamonds Forever. and uh, Charles Gray. Charles Gray, that's Charles it. Charles Gray. Gray. Yes. He was a good he was, villain. So he was, uh, he yeah. was Dicko Henderson in You Only Live Twice. Yeah. Um, of course, he was the one it, that got stabbed. In the he? back through that uh, yeah. paper wall, uh, yeah. Chinese. And then he was Blofeld in Diamonds Are Forever. That's it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Charles Gray. Uh, he was actually born Donald Gray. Oh. His real name was Donald Gray, and, oh. um, but no, he was he was known on the screen as Charles Gray. Charles Gray. But yeah. There you go. Uh, so either a lucky guess or some great knowledge there of, yeah. of him. Um, but Donald Pleasant, who played uh, Blofeld with the with the cat, uh, a big white cat he had. Uh, he he was a classic actor to me. Uh, he always played bad guys, and he was a a bad guy in Bond and villains there were so many villains uh in uh, bond but again i'm going back to early 60s when bond was just starting and my memories uh of those days uh so blofeld would be top of the top of the yeah, power for you would it? And, any, uh, any particular actor so you mentioned obviously charles gray and donald pleasance there was another one uh, telly savalas who was already, yeah. already well known he played uh against George Lazenby, I think. Yes, he did. He had a, a mountain top uh, with a building on. Uh, he was a good villain. Uh, well, yeah, we, uh, uh, Jay and I talked about this on the main pod. Uh, for me, Tally Savalas was more of like a physical threat, whereas Donald mm -hmm. Pleasance and one or two others that played Bonfold kind of sat in the background, didn't they? Yeah. Whereas yeah. he was a bit more of a in-your-face physical yeah. threat. Yeah. So I thought he played it a slightly different way uh, to other actors. Yeah. Another bad villain was, um, uh, it was, he played a villain in, uh, was it Skyfall or not? Uh, Skyfall, it was the, um, the main Javier, Javier Bardem. That's it, Bardem, Bardem. In to me, he played a, a real baddie villain because uh, he really did come over as evil. And again, a good, damn good actor who plays bad guys. Uh, it's like the old days of you knew who was going to be a bad guy when they walked on screen. It was Lee Marvin, Jack Palance, and Barden is is just that sort. I mean, he might be a nice guy off screen, but his face and his character fits a bad guy, and he was a really good bad guy, good bad guy, yeah. Uh, in in that Bond film, um, uh, uh, Skyfall. Skyfall, yeah, yeah. He played uh, Ralph Silver. Oh. And he was the, uh, he was a former agent of M's, wasn't he? Cause yeah, he that's it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. As you get older, your memory starts to go, and you yeah. try and remember your past. 
uh, and that's why I've gone back to sixes. But yeah, uh, Bardem was a damn good villain in uh, in Skyfall. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll get on to some top fives, and villains is one of those later on. But um, another thing synonymous with Bond films are the gadgets. Obviously, yeah. there's various scenes with uh, Bond and Q talking through the the gadgets. Uh, some films utilise them more than others, but is there any that stand out to you as a particular favourite, or were you, are you a fan of the gadgets in, in the Bond film? I like the gadgets. Uh, the one where John Cleese uh, took the place of... Uh, uh, is it M? Q. Uh, Q, Q, sorry. Yeah. Uh, quartermaster, yeah. Um, he got... Um, don't tell me the... the Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Uh, I think he was going down... A mountain, a mount, uh, uh, lots of ice and snow and that, and he had a, a round, uh, this like puffer jacket that blew into a big ball. Yes, yeah. Uh, that was a, a good gadget, but to me the favourite gadget of all was the car, fitted with machine guns and uh, tyre bursting metal things and oil and that, the, the, the James Bond Aston Martin. Uh, that. The DB5 from Goldfinger. Yeah, and also yeah. what it reappeared in one or two other films. It was in Skyfall, yeah. and most recently, and uh, I think it was in. I uh, was in some more Craig films. I think it was in the the latest it, one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, the, it, in uh, in No Time to Die. That's it. Yeah. Uh, did yeah. Did Connery have it in any others? I think in, did he have it in Thunderball? I think it first appeared in From Rush with Love because uh, he had a. Was it a Lagonda in Doctor No? Again, I'm I'm not sure. I My mean, memory's not good uh but uh the has got to be the aston martin that uh, james uh, that sean connery drove um and uh the the pen that shot out a bullet and, th and the, all the gadgets were great uh and the glasses that pierce brosnan put on and that he could see uh, that someone was carrying a gun in the back pocket or in the hip pocket what have you all these gadgets were great. You, you could talk all day just about the gadgets. Uh, and, uh, of course, it was British, and uh, they were good, yeah, yeah. But that pen, uh, not a pen, uh, when I think it was Sean Connery had to go underwater, and he had a, it was in the shape of a pen, he put it in his mouth and he could breathe underwater for a long time. Yeah, yeah. in uh, Thunderball. Yeah, nice. there was, I think there were sharks in the, the pool or something, yeah, yeah. There's loads of gadgets you could go on. Uh, the gadget that uh, Cleb wore with the uh, boots with the points on that came out. Yeah. And yeah, there are lots of gadgets. All very good. Good stuff. So um, moving on to the future then. So obviously we've we've had um, 25 films. We've had six Bond actors. Uh, Daniel Craig has finished his stint as James Bond. And there's various rumours about who the next one might be. Who... <laughs> Who do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Dad pointed at himself. Uh, you, you never know. You never well, know. I've, I've yeah. tried to make a case for me to be the next Bond as well, but uh, Hollywood have not called so far. But um, are there any actors that you think of that would make a good James Bond? Or who, who do you think should be the next one? Yeah, uh, there was an actor by the name of uh, Luke Evans uh, who was... Uh, who played Bruce Reynolds in, I think it was a TV film, of The Great Train Robbery. Uh, Luke Evans, then there's Tom Hardy. But you see, Tom Hardy is already well known. Uh, and that, So there's one or two, but the, the person who's, who becomes Bond has got to have like a, a mean streak about him, you know, a mean look about him. Uh, maybe sex appeal. Uh, obviously, he's got to be you know six foot with a few muscles uh and about what 13 14 15 stone uh, of muscle in his 70s <laughs> with a mustache <laughs> <laughs> is this is this where this is going <laughs> yeah yeah air coming out his ears <laughs> yeah it's it's not up to me but i'd like to see someone like luke evans good actor uh portray him but uh whoever they pick that's it you know I mean, I, I didn't believe at the first that Daniel Craig would be a good Bond. But to me, it's turned out the best, just in front of Sean Connery. There's been a, been a few names linked in, well, in recent years and also in the past. So the likes of Idris Elba has been discussed as a potential yeah. Bond actor. Obviously, you mentioned Tom Hardy. Uh, one of the big names mentioned at the moment is Henry Cavill, who plays yeah. Superman, of course. Yeah. And he was apparently 
close to getting the role when Craig got it, but was deemed too young at the time. Um, but just kind of going off topic a little bit, what about in the past? Are there any actors you think missed out on the part? Like one that comes to mind for me would be uh, Clive Owen back when oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, when Brosnan uh, was was in charge. Uh, Clive Owen seemed to be one linked with the role taken over from Brosnan. Uh, I think way back when, but even before Connery got the part, Cary Grant was yeah, yeah, was yeah muted as a as a potential actor. Is there anything any actors over the last sixty years you think either missed out or would have made a good Bond or the missed opportunity? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, I really couldn't say anybody because there, there's not many good actors and you try and fit them into a role. Uh, I don't know. I mean, David Niven, he had that suaveness about him, but would he have made a good Bond? Well, I was a fan of David Niven and it's hard to picture him playing Bond, but then again... Did David Niven play Bond in the spoof? Was it Casino oh, yeah, Royale yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, 67 casino royale i think it was yeah yeah, yeah that, uh, oh. it's an unofficial bond yeah, so yeah. We're, we're not sort of covering that on on the main pod because it's not part of the eon franchise but uh, yeah it was out the same year as you only live twice that's it yeah 67 yeah yeah okay um so on the rating room we like to talk ratings so i thought we could do some top fives if that's okay. So let's start with, what would you say are the top five Bond films? So you mentioned Skyfall as your favourite. I'm guessing that's number one. Yeah, Skyfall um, number one. What about the rest? Number two, I'd put From Russia With Love. Uh, number three, <sighs> um, it may be You Only Live Twice. Now, again, we had lots of gadgets with the, volcano opening up and the rockets going through and that um but uh living daylights with uh, timothy dalton it's hard to say put them into five uh offhand i, will, I could say this that and the other but i'd get them wrong and i might miss a film out mm -hmm. really i need time to write a list out and then I could put them in a in a permanent order. But well, let's. Well, we've got we've got four. So we've yeah. we've said Skyfall, and we've got yeah. You Only Live Twice from, from Russia from Russia with Love second. second from You Only Live Twice, Twice maybe third maybe third. Yeah. Living Daylights you mentioned as a one yeah. of the Dalton films, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, any any other Conneries or I mean, you mentioned Roger Moore earlier. Any of his films stand out, or you're not really well, a fan only, of them? Well, only uh, uh, the the first one, um, uh, Roger Moore, nineteen seventy three. Live and let no 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 yep, it wasn't yeah, yeah. Live, live and let die that's it yeah. yeah that was a good one uh but what to me roger moore stayed a bit too long it got a bit creaky at the end yeah. uh but i would put maybe dr no which again was the first one uh so you had to compare it to the first yeah. one set the bar yeah. yeah 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 so so let's say as your unofficial top five skyfall yeah from russia with love yeah uh, you only live twice. Yeah, living, living daylights. daylights and Doctor, Doctor No. So yeah. it's a good list. I don't want to sway your thinking, but what did you think of Goldfinger? Because for me, that it, was that was my favourite Connery film. Uh, but uh, it, what it was thought? good. But uh, uh, if I, top five, I'd put it top six. Okay. You know, it's that's a, that's a good answer. So uh, moving on. Bond girls. So you Lord mentioned. Them, yeah. uh, well, uh, we, can you narrow it down to five? So uh, you mentioned Daniela, Dan, Daniela, Daniela Bianchi. Bianchi. So as uh, Tatiana Romanova, would you put her as number one? Because you mentioned Ursula Andress as well, or uh, a honey, a honey rider, of course. From well, Doctor yeah, Man. and also we're talking about Honey Rider or Ursula Andress in 1962, and uh, Daniela Bianchi in 63. And yes, they were beautiful then, but they are now in their 80s, if they're still alive. Uh, so anyway, those two... Well, let, let's go with as, as of at the time. You know. <laughs> uh, Honor Blackman, I didn't rate her. I'm sorry. No. I didn't sort of... Yeah, good actress, but not as a Bond girl. To me, a Bond girl has to have, you know, everything, you know. Um, I've got to go through... Get, oh, uh, um, it's hard to say top five. Those two I've mentioned, Danielle and, and Ursula. Um, 
it's, it's hard to say. I'd have to have a good think of top five. Most of them, uh, like Daniela Bianchi, beautiful, but soon forgotten. Honor Blackman was famous before she became a Bond girl. Ursula Andress was one of the few who became famous and stayed famous. Uh, it, it is hard to remember the leading ladies in Bond films. Uh, so, but they're all very good. And they all had the, the sex appeal. Let me let me throw some names at you then. Uh, not to sway you in any way, but just yep. to kind of jog your memory a bit. So, from a Majesty's Secret, on a Majesty's Secret Service, there was, of course, Tracy, who married James Bond. Or Teresa oh, DiVincenzo. Oh, yeah, Diana Rigg. Diana Rigg, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, you see, uh, my memory went. Diana Rigg, yeah. I'd put her in the top one. <laughs> <laughs> I go. mean, yeah, lovely. I mean, she had that... Uh, girly touch with a touch of sex appeal yeah diana rig yeah um just oh. going back through so obviously you mentioned uh pussy galore played by holland blackman yeah uh do you remember jill and tilly masterson from the goldfinger as well oh yeah the character was killed off i think yeah uh yes i believe you're yeah. right yeah one of the ones covered in gold paint that's oh yeah that was shirley eaton was it shirley eaton uh you could be right there yeah yeah uh, again we're going back to the 60s, but Diana Rigg was in 69. Uh, yeah. yeah um, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'll flick through some of this. So Diamonds yeah. Are Forever, you've got uh, Plenty O'Toole, Tiffany Case. Oh, oh yeah. And um, oh. Uh, oh, that girl in 71. Diamonds Are Forever. The, uh, lit, no, no. Uh, you, you had Tiffany Case, you had Plenty O'Toole. There was uh, Marie. Oh, no. Uh, there was Bambi and Thumper as well. Yeah. Um, with a, with a, who was... Thumper. No, the, the lead girl in 71, Diamonds Are it's Forever. The, so it was, the, the character was Tiffany Case. Yes. Jill St. John. Jill St. John, yes. Of I course. can see her now. Yeah. I'd have to have a list and then I could remember them, how they looked. And then put it in a list. Yeah, well, but, we, yeah we, we may... Uh... We may go unofficially here again with the, uh, but let's. I'll just. I'll go through some of my notes because I. It's good to remember as well. Um, so the man with the golden gun. You had um, uh, Maud Adams, of course, who was in Octopussy as well. She played uh, two different Bond girls and also a cameo in A View to a Kill that was uncredited. So technically three different Bond girls. Uh, Triple X from The Spy Who Loved Me and Yamasova, the Russian spy. Was was one of the one of the Bond girls, uh, Doctor Holly Goodhead from Moonraker. <laughs> was, that was her name. Uh, Moon. We don't we don't like to talk about Moonraker on the pod. It's uh, probably my least favourite. Oh. Uh, just moving up, moving on into obviously Mex Octopussy, um, played by Maud Adams. Uh, a View to a Kill. You had Mayday played by Grace Jones. Very uh, oh, yeah. very yeah. Aggressive. and also she was a villain technically as yeah. well. Um, so but she saved Bond's life, didn't she? She did in the end, yeah. yeah. Uh, Stacey Sutton was probably the main Bond girl of that piece. Uh, moving further along, as we get into the Dalton era, we've got uh, Pam Bouvier. Who oh. was in Licence to Kill. Yeah, and um, in a, a Pierce Brosnan film, who played, uh, was it Electra? Electra King, yes. Uh, played she... by... Uh, Electra King. Um, um, she was beautiful. Uh, let me find... Um, one one of the... Top she was, she in was a, played by Sophie Mosso. Yeah, and she was in Braveheart. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and then when you get into the Craig era, uh, we have obviously in uh, Madeline, who uh, was his love interest in oh, uh, Spectre and, and No Time to Die, uh, played by Lee Sudo. Yeah. And, and that's uh, my apologies for my pronunciation there. Samantha, oh Samantha Bond, uh, uh, played Money played Penny. Who? Uh, Samantha Bond played Money Penny in the Brosnan. That's films. it. Yeah, she, yes. she's, uh, yeah. And um, of course, in Die Another Day, Halle Berry. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. As well. So, lots to choose from. We've probably gone beyond the top five, but yeah, uh, yeah. we'll. Um, We'll maybe in the notes put down an unofficial top five. So let's um, let's again go from from good to bad villains. So you mentioned Blofeld. Yeah. Um, if we had to pick a top five, who else might be on that list? 
Um, Robert Carlyle played someone who'd got a bullet in his brain. Renard. Renard. Yeah, in, uh, he was. In the world is not enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sean Bean played uh, an agent with uh, James Bond, and they were blowing up a, a Russian plant or something. And um, Sean Bean, the character, was captured, and he was shot dead. But he came back. Uh, well, everybody thought he'd died. And I can't remember his name. So he was uh, 006, Alex Trevelyan, That's... or also known as Janus, uh, uh, which was the, the the Janus Syndicate, which he, he headed up. Yeah, yeah Sean being uh, a good actor, again, he can play uh, good baddies, if you can get my drift. Uh, yeah, uh, Robert Carlyle. Um, there were quite a few, but Bardem, uh, Xavier Bardem, is it? Foster? Xavier Bardem, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, to me, was a... A brilliant baddie and as was Donald Pleasance uh, they oozed badness good actors can play the part well and and that's it you know for you've got to have a real good good baddie uh, uh, what about some of the henchmen would you include any oh, of them? Like, the likes of Jaws or an odd job would you include odd, any of those odd job, I'm just gonna say odd job was a, a brilliant uh, henchman uh, yeah he, he was brill with the the bowl rat uh, Jaws uh, to me, it was a bit funny, you know. It, it, it's now I, I don't sort of rate him as a real bad man because in the film he became a goody, yeah. uh, you know. In in the I think it was the second one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, in uh, Moonraker. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I put odd job there among the top five. Uh, Badam, I think uh, him and Donald Pleasance. Yeah, yeah. Top of the pile. That's the list. So let's do one more top five. Um, and that's on theme songs. So top of the list, I'm guessing, would be Matt Munro. Yeah, Matt Munro. Love. To what? me, it, it appeals to me. Uh, from Russia with Love. Uh, it was part of 60s. Uh, and everything about the 60s were great. I mean, the 60s to me was the Beatles, the Space Race, the Kennedys and James Bond. Those were the swinging 60s. Uh, and the the songs, well, there was great music about it, and the James Bond songs, uh, Dr. No was very catchy. Uh, obviously, my favourite is From Russia With Love. And as we went on, there was Shirley Bassey uh, and Tom, Tom Jones. I think Tom Jones sang Thunderball. Well, I'm a fan of Tom Jones. Uh, the song was great and powerful. Shirley Bassey, Goldfinger, and something else she sang. Uh, she sang three ones three. on in total. Oh. She did uh, Goldfinger, she did Diamonds Are Forever, and Moonraker. Yeah, yeah. So si the singer has, appeals to me as well as the songs. You can have a good song and not a very good singer or, say, or group that you're not attracted to. Whereas you, if you get a, a good singer and a bad song, you know, it can make this. But yeah, they're, they're my top. Uh, from Russia with Love, Matt Monroe. It's to me, it's my number one, uh, and then a, a few more follow on. Uh, Adele and Skyfall. I liked it. Yeah, that's a it's a good list. So, uh, final thing from a from a rating, a ranking point of view. So we had six six men took the mantle of James Bond. Um, I'm guessing. So we, we talked about in terms of who's the top. You've got Daniel Craig yeah. as the top. Uh, um, a hair above yeah, Sean Connery uh, Sean in second Connery, place. Yeah. Second, uh, I think Pierce Brosnan was a good actor. So Pierce Brosnan so at number three. I'd put him in third. Now, yeah. a lot of people wouldn't, but he would to me. And then I, I'd put uh, Timothy Dalton, although he only made two appearances. Uh, George Lazenby only made one appearance. And Roger Moore made the most appearance. I'd put him in the top six at number six. Nice bloke, entertainer, all that. But for Bond, you've got to be a cold-blooded killer with a touch of sex appeal. And you've got to be, have the face of a mean bastard and be cool, calm and collected. Daniel Craig was, and so was Sean Connery. Oh, that's a good list. Well, that's kind of the end of what I've got planned for this. Anything else you want to 
mention about James Bond or your love of or memories of? Well, uh, uh, again, uh, you need a bit of time. Uh, uh, as you get older, you start to forget things. What's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you forget things, but uh, happy memories. Uh, thanks to my son here, he's got me the whole James Bond set. And uh, I, I watch him now and again. And uh, it's the great, there's great memories from the 60s right up to present day. And I hope whoever gets the part of James Bond is a good enough actor to play him. That seems uh, a, a good thing to end on. So thank you for being on, on the podcast. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Post. It will uh, it will be coming <laughs> via, via carrier pigeon <laughs> any day now. Well, if, if there's no carrier pigeon. They've got bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> oh well bangles me money <laughs> uh, you know you get what you pay for on this podcast that's for sure <laughs> kids well that was the episode i recorded a few weeks ago now with my dad and in fact that is the last guest episode of the season jay will be back with me next week as we bring you our end of season special and stay tuned after the closing credits you'll hear a teaser for what we've got in store for season two of The Rating Room. Thanks for listening, everyone. Well, that's this week's episode done. We hope you enjoyed it. Special thanks to the band Sugar Tongue for the theme tune to The Rating Room. You can find them on all the usual social media channels. And be sure to check out their song The System, available now on Spotify. You can find and message us on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram by searching The Rating Room. You'll find all our social media links on our website, theratingroom.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or feel free to drop us an email at theratingroom at gmail.com. Goodbye, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week, right here on The Rating Room. It's Jay and Andy again, and we're back for another exciting season of The Rating Room. We have a special treat for all you movie lovers out there. Season 2 is all about the incredible films of none other than the legendary Tom Hanks. That's right, we are diving deep into the world of Tom Hanks. We'll be re-watching some all-time classics and also watching some films for the very first time. We'll be covering his earlier film Big, to his incredible performances in Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Castaway, and much, much more. Tom Hanks has played some pretty diverse roles over the years. He has had a magical way of making us laugh and cry. He's like a chameleon, and he has this unique ability to become any character he takes on. Jay, I can't wait to dig into these films. Tom Hanks is a true icon. I mean, who doesn't love the guy? He's like America's sweetheart. He's my favorite actor for sure. Season two is gonna be a lot of fun. As we did in season one, we are going to discuss the film and go through some facts and figures. Also, we've introduced some new segments in Season 2. We'll be comparing our ratings and rankings each week in our Rank Bank feature, and we'd love to discuss the latest episode with you and see whether you agree or disagree with our ratings and rankings. You can follow us on the usual social media accounts by searching The Rating Room on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and YouTube. We're also releasing some content outside of the main podcast feed on our social media and YouTube channels. You can also find more information on our website, www.theratingroom.com. You can find the show notes on our website, plus we have pages dedicated to each of the rankings and ratings. Make sure you subscribe to The Rating Room, wherever you find your favourite podcasts.